No No Boy is a novel written by John Okada in 1957. The novel revolved around the injustice of internment camps and the effect it had on different Japanese American families. However, No No Boy does not focus on what internment camps were or what they were like, but instead the diverse attitudes of Japanese Americans after they were closed. No No Boy is set in Seattle, Washington in 1946, recently after Japanese Americans were freed from these camps. The protagonist Ichiro Yamada was the first character introduced to us in the novel. He just returned from serving two years in federal prison because he was a No No Boy. No No Boys were defined as Japanese Americans males who answered no to two questions regarding their loyalty to the United States. The questions were, are you willing to serve in the armed forces of the United States on combat duty wherever ordered? Will you swear unqualified allegiance to the United States of America and faithfully defend the United States from any or all attack by foreign or domestic forces and forswear any form of allegiance or obedience to the Japanese Emperor to any other foreign government power or organization? Ikro's no responses to both questions were heavily influenced by his mother's opinion. Both of Ikro's parents were immigrants, but his mom especially had an unfaltering loyalty to Japan. First, I thought the two loyalty questions were fair to ask, especially because it was a chaotic time in the United States after the attack on Pearl Harbor. However, the more time I spent reflecting on those questions, the sooner I realized that it stereotyped all Japanese Americans as a threat to the United States' safety. And I also noticed that it only instilled more paranoia at the systemic level. The questions did more harm than it did good. It put Japanese Americans in a tough situation where they had to prove their loyalty to the United States by agreeing to serve in the army and dismissing all ties to their home country, Japan. I think it's cruel to ask that of Japanese immigrants. Japan was where they were born, and it's also their home country. They already had to leave their family and their country behind, and to force them to answer these questions was unethical. I think Ichiro's mother is just a proud Japanese, and I don't think she's insane. However, I do understand Ichiro's resentment towards her. Ichiro has regretted answering no to those loyalty questions and attributed his feelings of worthlessness and as a misfit to his inability of just saying what he wanted to say instead of what his mom wanted him to say. Ichiro had good intentions when he listened to his mother's command. He wanted to make her proud and happy, and she was. But Ichiro has had to suffer through prison and being shunned by his own brother and his old friends as a result of being a no-no boy. These sufferings and consequences that Ikuro had to face were never acknowledged by his own mother, whom he was just trying to please in the first place. Ichiro struggled with figuring out his identity. His actions defined him as a loyal Japanese, but he wanted to feel as a Japanese-American. This theme of complex issues of identity continues outside the novel. The author John Okada was the opposite of his main character, Ichiro. Okada and his family were among the thousands of Japanese Americans who were moved to internment camps. Okada was released from the camp when he voluntarily signed up to serve in the army. Okada's experience contributed to the theme of complex issues of identity. He wrote a complete novel about an experience he never had. This made me think, if Okada was not a no-no boy, could he really understand the experiences they had? To look further, I interviewed one of my friends who have also read this novel. At first, it was a surprise that Okada did serve in the military because he definitely succeeded in creating a vivid perspective of what a no-no boy was and the life that they lived afterwards. Um, but to answer your question, no, I do not think it bothered me because... I resonated with the protagonist and was, was able to stand in Ichiro's shoes and feel the burden that he felt, ultimately, that Okada created.
No, you don't have to live through something, whether it be an event or a time, in order to understand it. And that's exactly what Okada proved in his book. The lens that he created for his readers enabled us to capture the complete experience that a no-no boy would have in that in that time. And I I truly felt the weight that Ichiro had on his shoulders that was that was placed there um, to please his parents and the regrets and resentments and the feelings that he had as as feeling like a misfit. John Okada's ability to create such an experience and share it with his readers is why ethnic literature is so important. When we teach history of internment camps in history classes of elementary school, high school, or even in university classes, we glaze over the stone cold facts, like when it happened, where it happened, and why it happened. Schools didn't focus on the toll it took on the thousand of Japanese Americans who were completely innocent. Ethnic literature enables anyone to develop a deep connection with characters such as Ichiro and experience inequality, injustice, frustration of not being treated with respect, and being treated as a misfit. Although it was an embarrassing moment for America, Okada's novel succeeded to create a story and characters that his readers could appreciate, understand, and learn from. This is the significance of ethnic literature. To humanize negatively stereotyped groups by creating characters that readers find themselves connecting deeply to. This is a special way to invoke empathy in readers and inspire them to deconstruct racism.